everyone and welcome back to open Frida Valentin on this very special edition dedicated to the late Yomotoro. Everyone loved Yomotoro, you know, since his passing on June 30th, 2012, since the passing of the legendary Puerto Rican guitarist Yomotoro on June 30th, 2012, much attention has been given to his legacy in music. Just two weeks after his funeral, uh, Newark, New Jersey named a street after the Fania All Stars. The National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences just bestowed a Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award to the King of the Cuatro. While the Bronx Community Board, representing the area where Yomo lived, uh, unanimously passed a resolution to have Ogden Avenue renamed Yomotoro uh, Place to Yomotoro Place, that is, to be signed by the mayor in January. Yomotoro was well loved as a virtuoso guitarist. His strumming could be heard over the famous Trio Los Panchos recordings. Uh, whoever it was, after his appearance over Larry Harlow's classic tribute to Arsenio recordings, that Yomo teamed up with Willie Colon and Hector Lavoe, forever changing the face of traditional music, landing the funky Hibaro on the lineup of the internationally acclaimed Fania All Stars. And well, here on set with us, is one of the women who knew the Mr. the King of Cuatro, Yomotoro the best. Please welcome to the studio set Denise Toro. Hi. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. That was a really long intro to him just so that we could uh, familiarize the viewers with who Yomotoro is and, and what your presence uh, here means and, uh, and just the stories that you're going to share with us today. Um, I just basically shared with the viewers all these wonderful accolades uh, and that's not even half of it. Yeah, It's not even half of it. It is a lot. <laughs> so I mean as best as you can um, share with us what that must have been like for you growing up in the presence of such a legend. Growing up with him was a different childhood. It's not your ordinary childhood. Our bonding time was in the middle of the night when he would come home after a gig with sacks of White Castle hamburgers, and that's what we would we would eat and talk. That was our bonding time. That's so cool. Yeah, and then having to share him, that was a bit of a drag. But it was great, too, in the sense that we got to meet a lot of famous people, like um, Ramito, Blanca Iri Villafañe, uh, Johnny Albino, Lilio Gonzalez, a lot of the old timers. It was an interesting childhood. Yeah, you know, um, just because I know we have images of, like, his journey, um, it, it, it just you, uh, like, at what age did this all really start hitting you where you would have to, like, I guess, meet all these other musicians, come to rehearsals? I mean, what was that like? That must have been fun. It was a lot of fun, and I remember it made a big impact in, on me in my sixth grade and then crossing over to seventh because I was a chubby child and wasn't popular. Right, right. And he played at my sixth grade graduation. So when I got to seventh grade, I became very popular. Nice. Because he played at the graduation. So I was Yomo Toro's daughter and everybody wanted to be my friend then. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. That was, and he that's became so my <laughs> hero then. But during that time, I was like, you're my hero now. <laughs> So what school was that, and were they aware of the impact of the cuatro playing? Was it the, the, the teachers, the parents, like who was it that actually, like I, aside from your friends, you know, because he's just fabulous. He, he has a hypnotic style about him. He's very hypnotizing. True, true. But it was, for me, it was more the kids. This was what I noticed. However, the teachers were fascinated by him. We grew up in a Puerto Rican community, so everybody knew who he was. He kept that culture going, and he made it spread. So even if you weren't Puerto Rican, when you heard his music, you became Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a, a beautiful style because he can do any music, any kind of music, rock, uh, aguinaldos, uh, danzas, flamenco, any kind of music. So he was, he was different. He was extraordinary. He was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, his journey was extraordinary. Um, again, the impact that his strings had on music. I mean, once he, his strings were incorporated into a sound, that's it. It became kind of Yomotoro's <laughs> sound. I did. And a lot of the times I look at videos and to me, what I see is that like the cuatro for such a little, little instrument has such a big sound that a lot of the times the other instruments play around this cuadro. 
So that, I think that's a cool thing, too. And so just so that everybody, in case they're not aware of what a cuatro is, um, cause it's actually, um, it's a Latino uh, instrument. And, you know, somebody non-Latino may not know what a cuatro is. Can you describe what a cuatro is? Well, it's our national instrument of Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. It's a very small guitar. I don't know why they call it a cuatro, but it has ten strings. And... Um, I think it imitates the lute or something like that because it's a small guitar. But what a sound that thing has. Yes. Oh, it's just, it's unique. It is unique. It's a sound all its own and it can convert itself into any kind of music because he even did the twist. You know, he did a re uh, some kind of rendition of the twist. So to do the twist with a cuatro. That's really nice. That's kind of really cool. nice. Yes, yes, it yes, is. Yes, yes. Which is, you know, the beauty of um, of your father and his um, his style. Like, um, you know, we had him here on the show, and mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, this was actually the last television appearance that he made. And um, aside from being honored, um, I got to really get to know him a little bit more in uh, feeling his sense of humanity. Um, uh, he was a humanitarian, very, and humble. Oh, he's very humble, and he loved to do fundraisers. I remember as a child, we couldn't have Christmas Eve with him because he was out trying to get toys for needy children and playing and just doing things to get stuff out to the less fortunate than his own, you know, and to the community that, that he was, was raised in, you know, the... the we were we were living in Brooklyn. We were born and raised in Brooklyn, and it wasn't it was it was not such a a poor neighborhood, but it wasn't such a rich neighborhood either. Right. It was more poverty than than money. But, right. And he made sure that every kid on my block had something to open on Christmas Day. Awesome. That's yeah, so awesome. And, and it was during a time when Bam Bam dolls were and Pebble dolls were. We're, we're big, so everybody had a pe Bam Bam stones. doll and a Pebbles <laughs> doll, you know? So it was pretty cool. You know, what's it's really nice. cool is that you have a, uh, an actual uh, recollection of, like, these certain moments of, of his generosity, right? Yeah. Um, do you remember when he was a television host? Because I don't know if a lot of people know that. He used to be a television host I as well. I do remember that. I do remember that because we watched him every time he, he got up on television. So we watched all his shows, and we were like... Look at him, he's on TV. And then we, when he came home, we would tell him what we liked most about the show and what he did really, really well. And, and he loved all of that. He loved hearing that from his family, you know, yeah. and to see the pride that we had for him. And I'm sure his passing must have been uh, really hard for you. I but know. how has it been getting all these um, the acknowledgement of for his for his presence? You know, I mean, he's got some streets named after him. He he uh, was uh, granted a, a lifetime achievement, a Grammy award, in which you and and, and your mm -hmm. mom went yeah. to accept. Right? What was yes, that like? It's it's all bittersweet because I I lost my father, my teacher, my best friend, and my hero. However, to see all this love given to him and all this recognition and everything that he worked for for the 60 years and that I had to share him. Uh, wow, I can't even put that into words. And it kind of like softens the blow that I have to deal with every day that he's not here. And I want to pick up that telephone and call him and I can't, you know, but all seeing all this love and the tributes that are, are given to him and the Grammy and, and the street naming and and I love all of this because he deserves it. He absolutely he did. Deserves he it. absolutely did. He definitely earned it without a doubt. He is a king and we are celebrating him. He's the Do man. He, yes, he is the man. He is the man. Now, in celebration, there's an event going on on Friday to share. Not this um, Friday, next Friday, January 11th. Yeah, there's an event at the Copacabana to tribute to my father. And I'm very much looking forward to that. And I want to thank Aurora for putting this together. Phenomenal job. And I hope everyone will come out and join us in the Paranda, celebrating Las Tavitas. And you'll even learn. Some people, Puerto Ricans will learn what Octavitas are. I know, because there's you a know, lot of... Because a lot of people didn't, don't know what that is. Right, because it's... Technically, a Puerto Rico tradition celebrated, but um, we're we're getting it here. Yeah, in the we're States. bringing it here. <laughs> so I'd like everybody to come out and find out what Octavitas is, and even join in in the Parranda to celebrate the Three Kings Day, and just be with us and have a great time remembering this great, beautiful legend. 
Yomotoro. Yomotoro, my daddy. Nice. Thank you so much for being Thank here with you us. Thank you so much for having me. Such Thank intimate you. intimate feelings and thoughts. Thank, Thank you. you. And I thank the beautiful. public for loving him and supporting him, too. Absolutely. Oh. Thank right. you. Woo, that was so beautiful. All right. Once again, thank you, Denise, for sharing thank you. your stories about your Happy father New Year. with us. Happy New Year to you, thank too. You. And, you know, to you guys out there, we'll be back after this break with more of our tribute to Yomodoro here on Open. Don't go anywhere. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. This